you very much. And uh, I'd like to begin by uh, thanking the organizers, Shugo and others. Actually, yeah, I've been here for already for more than two weeks. It's the week before the, this meeting started. Um, this is my third visit to India, second time to ICTS. But uh, last time to ICTS, I was just attending the conference for five days. This time, I enjoy more. Uh, of course, a uh, wonderful environment in this institute. But some people might complain this institute is a bit far, far away from city center. That certainly may be a disadvantage, but uh, there is also advantage um, because uh, you can see from the picture. Um, those of you from Bangalore local would recognize, but uh, this here is something called uh, Nanti Hills, uh, which is in neighborhood of Bangalore. And uh, actually, one weekend I uh, cycled with high school from this institute, ICTS, all the way to Nanti Hills. So, the, to the base of the hill, it's just 40 kilometers from here. Then it's another seven kilometers, 400, 400 meters up in elevation. And uh, I was a bit afraid about traffic. Of course, I wouldn't try riding into downtown Bangalore, but the uh, countryside is quite OK. Uh, I heard that uh, you can actually borrow a bike from the security guard or somewhere, this institute. So I think riding around this uh, institute is nice. That's the advantage of uh, being in its suburb. Um, so, going back to science, um, I'd like to talk about uh, progression with uh, these people. Uh, the paper is already in archive. Chenghua is my student. Uh, all the other people, uh, especially Gil, is uh, based on post tech in Korea. So, as I will explain, actually, we were working separately on apparently very different uh, problem, but uh, then we discovered that uh, somehow we are working on uh, almost the same model. We decided to collaborate. So there are many open questions, I will explain, but uh, I, I think we found something interesting. I'd like to tell you. Okay, so, um, so this is our side of motivation. Uh, we started. Uh, from sharing some experimental result on liquid helium done by Morishita uh, san uh, Tsukuba University in Japan. His experimental finding is also in archive. So he was studying a so called monolayer of liquid helium uh, absorbed on, on graphite. So these uh, black dots are graphite, Japanese letters. But then uh, they can put a very thin layer of helium 4 on top of graphite. Then at certain density, 6.36 uh, uh, nanometer, uh, uh, nanometer squared, uh, the helium-4 atoms are located at the center of this uh, hexagonal bracket. And, uh, but uh, because of the repulsive interaction, the neighboring brackets, uh, so there is one bracket occupied by helium atom. Then the neighboring bracket must be empty. So you have this alternating pattern called square root three by square root three structure. It happens at this particular density. But then they, uh, in, they can increase uh, density of helium-4. And actually, it's not completely clear what happens, but uh, this is the picture believed by experimentalists. So, so you need to absorb this excess density in some way. The uh, idea is that uh, uh, you can form domain uh, structure. So each domain has the same square root three by square root three happens at this density. But then uh, because uh, this uh, root three by square root three structure breaks the translation symmetry, you can pick different kind of sublattice to be occupied by helium four atoms. So you can uh, draw three different patterns. Uh, each corresponds to some domain. And then when there is a domain walls between different domains. And uh, along these domain walls, uh, 
heading for atoms are occupying neighboring uh, brackets. So here you have increased density. So this increased density along the domain wall can uh, accommodate excess density. So this is a picture. Of course, it doesn't have to be honeycomb, but it can be stripe. And, but uh, one possibility is this honeycomb structure. But uh, then they wanted to verify this uh, structure by experiment. And uh, they tried to measure specific heat, but uh, for pure heading four system, somehow the specific heat was too small. They added the small am amount of uh, heading three, heading four system. And then, uh, then they did observe some specific heat coming from liquid helium, and uh, this is experimental finding. And uh, for different densities of heading four, but a constant and the small density of helium-3, they found uh, specific heat as a function of temperature like this. But interestingly, at low temperature limit, uh, specific heat scales like T squared. And uh, because, uh, so naively, this specific heat comes out only when you add helium-3 atoms. And uh, helium-3 is, of course, fermion. So naively, if helium-3 behaves like Fermi gas or Fermi liquid, then at low temperature, specific heat should be lenient in temperature. But the uh, actual finding is, uh, and uh, then this experimentalist, uh, Morisha san had the idea that uh, maybe this domain structure becomes uh, honeycomb-like. And then, you know, for, let's say graphene, we know that the dispersion is, Dirac fermion type, and uh, in Dirac fermion system like graphene, uh, low temperature specific heat is proportional to T squared. So that idea he had, and uh, he asked us whether this makes sense. Okay, so this is interesting, but of course there are several problems with this live idea. Um, so one idea, is, one problem is that uh, it's true that the Dirac fermions exhibit this t square uh, specific heat behavior. But um, for this to happen, the chemical potential should be exactly at the direct point. And in the case of graph graphene, uh, that is guaranteed by particle hole symmetry, unless you dope or you try uh, gate voltage. But uh, in case of helium-3, the chemical potential is determined by density of uh, Helions, that is helium-3 in this case. And uh, unless you fine-tune the density, there is no particular reason why the chemical potential. And uh, if chemical potential is off the Dirac point, you should have a usual Fermi liquid or Fermi gas. And basic heat should be linear in T. That's one problem. And uh, also, so one idea is that uh, uh, once you form this domain structure, then maybe helium-3 can move along these uh, domain walls. So this is a problem of particles traveling along these uh, edges of honeycomb lattice. But uh, in case of graphite, uh, graphene, uh, the standard model is that the electron can sit only on vertices, uh, just hop to next vertex. So th this model is, uh, not exactly the same as graphene. So the first question is, uh, what is the dispersion relation of particles traveling around these edges of honeycomb lattice? It's kind of a simple question, but uh, I didn't know the answer. We tried to, we started to study. And uh, another motivation on uh, Korean side, uh, Gilyong and collaborators, came from this material, tantalum disulfide. And uh, this material has been studied by many people, so probably you know better than I do. But anyway, so uh, at T equals zero, um, in ambient pressure and so on, uh, the, this material is known to exhibit a CDW order, uh, like this. So, so this shows a so-called David star structure. Now, by the way, uh, so this David star contains a uh, central spin. So in the low temperature, this uh, central atom has a free spin one half. So effectively, this becomes triangular lattice with some 
longer range interaction and uh, this system is uh, thought to be uh, some kind of spin liquid at zero temperature, CTW. But uh, our interest is not in the uh, spin liquid phase itself, but uh, what happens if you apply pressure and so on. So if you apply some perturbation like pressure or doping and so on, then this CDW order uh, melts and uh, you enter the different phase. There are many experiments. So, sorry, I forgot the other reference, but uh, this is one experiment done under pressure and at finite temperature. So this narrow region near zero pressure, the CDW phase that I just mentioned, but if you add some pressure, then the system goes into different phase where the CDW uh, order is melted. So this is called NCCDW, which stands for near reconciliate CDW phase. Now if you apply uh, more pressure, then it becomes huge amateur. I, if you go to very low temperature, then you see uh, superconductivity. Although uh, in this uh, picture, in this figure, this uh, superconductivity in TC is uh, multiplied by 10. So actually TC is pretty low. Superconducting phase. So this is a phase diagram under pressure. And a similar phase diagram was obtained under doping of the same system. Again, uh, around zero doping, you have a CDW phase, Mott insulator. But then if you uh, dope by ion, then you again find a melted Mott insulator phase, nearly commensurate CDW phase. Um, and uh, again, at low temperature, uh, there is superconducting phase. Again, uh, superconducting TC is multiplied by 30, so actual TC is pretty low. But still, there is conducting and also there's some payment done on the uh, gate applying gate voltage again similar phase diagram first you have a C double phase and then under some gate voltage the system enters nearly commensurate C double phase and uh, then at very low temperature you apply superconducting so for very different type of perturbations, somehow the phase diagram looks the same. Okay, so this is interesting. And then the question is, what exactly is this nearly commensurate CDW phase? This, uh, this is an experimental group at POSTEC, Korea. And they did a STM measurement of tantalum sulfide in nearly commensurate CDW phase. And then this, okay, so this picture tells uh, many things. So you, on this picture, you can clearly identify some domain structure. So each domain looks like a CDW phase. And uh, each domain has a, a size of uh, diameter roughly 70 angstrom, uh, pretty big. And uh, actually, these domains form kind of regular pattern. And uh, if you enlarge this uh, STM image, then you can identify uh, this uh, heavy star structure, this component of uh, CDW phase. Uh, this is one domain, and uh, this is a neighboring domain. And uh, in each domain, these David stars are located a bit apart by some distance. But uh, around the domain wall, these domain, uh, sorry, Davis stars are touching with each other. So this is a bit like uh, domain and domain wall structure I discussed earlier concerning this helium 4 on graphite, although they are totally different materials. Uh, you mean this picture? Well, so I, I guess this is. Uh, uh, SDM image, so they are measuring the local density of state. Uh, yeah, in CDW phase, you can identify these 
AV star structure. It's nearly commensurate CD double phase CD domain structure. Okay. So, so how this STM image can be related to actual structure is not really a problem, but if you compare with the image on form in CD double phase and NCCD double phase, I think this would be the natural case. So this is an idea by Gil. So this NCCDL phase is a bit conducting. Uh, it's not as conducting as metals, but uh, it's more conducting than CDW phase that is motor insulator. So something, some electrons must be flowing. And uh, we learned that from STM image that uh, this NCCDW phase consists of uh, domains. And each domain, inside each domain, uh, looks like in CD double phase. So electrons must be, must be traveling somewhere, but uh, because uh, inside each domain looks like a CD double phase, which is motor insulator, a natural guess is that the electrons may be traveling around the domain walls. That's, again, non-trivial question, but uh, kind of natural assumption. Uh, then, he ended up with the model that uh, we have met network looks like honeycomb lattice and uh, electrons are traveling along the edge, not just on vertices, but uh, electrons can propagate along the edge. So somehow we ended up in uh, basically the same model in which the particles can travel along the edges of honeycomb lattice, not just on vertices. Of course, to make the model realistic, it becomes complicated and uh, should be different between these two systems. But uh, the simplest model, I guess, is just that the uh, particles can freely move along the edges. So first, we want to discuss such kind of simple models. So um, actually, this should be a simple exercise, but uh, we couldn't find the answer anywhere in the textbook and so on. So let's study this. Um, so each segment or edge is just a free 1D space in our model. But uh, it's maybe a bit uh, subtle how to deal with junction. But uh, at least we can uh, study the discretized version of this model. So we can discretize each 1D segment into many sites, and then along this uh, edge, the electron or particle can hop from one side to nearest neighbor. And then a junction you can put one side from which you can hop to any of the three neighboring sites. And uh, if we are interested in continuum limit, we can take the limit of uh, many sites at uh, each segment. Then this model is just uh, one example of periodic uh, tight binding model on periodic lattice. So <coughs> we can obtain the dispersion relation in the standard way. And, uh, so, but the result is kind of interesting. So this is the result we found. So, okay, so different colors uh, shows a different level of discretization. But uh, in the continuum limit, you can just focus on this purple color. So first point is that actually there are several Dirac points, Dirac cone-like structure like this. But uh, somewhat unexpected is that uh, there are flat bands. And actually, the flat bands, oops, oops. So the flat band actually uh, goes through the Dirac point. So around this Dirac point is not a uh, usual Dirac point, but uh, you see this kind of structure, which is sometimes called a spin band Dirac. And uh, I have, I show you uh, just uh, two sets of flat bands, but actually at higher energies, there are more and more flat bands. Uh, there is a cascade of flat bands. Yes. Yeah, that, that's a question. So, so, so 
if you define the half filling by you know the uh, number of fermions equal to half of the number of sites, then I think the uh, the the uh, fermion variable goes up. Uh, so, so, so the half filling is not quite well defined. This system each segment can yeah contain infinite number. So, so in order to match experiment, eventually we, we need to uh, find the uh, actual density and uh, what is the corresponding family. So, so we found a flat band. And uh, so that was kind of unexpected. But uh, once we think about it, the existence of flat band, actually infinite series of flat bands, can be understood rather naturally. That is, uh, okay, so this is non topological flat band, zero channel number. So that corresponds to uh, kind of localized states. And uh, actually, you can find that uh, you can easily naturally construct localized eigenstate because uh, let's focus on one hexagonal bracket in this Hankam structure. Then each edge is just a one dimensional free space. So the eigenstate, energy eigenstate, just corresponds to plane wave, sine or cosine. And uh, you can choose the energy so that, uh, and the phase of the wave function so that uh, this wave function on each edge is sine wave. And the uh, node of wave function exactly matches uh, match the vertices. Now you do the same on all the edges of this bracket. Then this is just an eigenstate of Schrodinger equation. And because uh, each, every vertex corresponds to the node of the wave function, uh, this wave function does not propagate outside this external bracket. So this is localized wave function. And uh, so here I draw the wave function with uh, three nodes on each vertex, so one node in the middle of each edge, but you can draw infinite series of sine waves. Zero node, one node, two nodes, three nodes, each edge, and equally construct a localized against it. So that's why we have infinite series of flat bands in this model. And uh, so this is probably interesting because uh, as we have heard also in many other talks during this uh, meeting, and uh, also there has been many studies in just several decades, that uh, flat band can lead to interesting physics, basically because uh, in flat band system, kinetic energy is suppressed, so interaction becomes important, so you can uh, expect uh, uh, fractionalization, uh, ferromagnetism, uh, superconductivity. Um, so it, it's interesting to realize flat band, uh, but usually you need some fine tuning of the parameters to realize flat bands. So, for example, the, this uh, model proposed by Tasaki so that uh, he can mathematically rigorously prove the existence of ferromagnetic ground state in this model uh, by fine tuning the ratio between T1, T2. You can realize flat band. In the case of flat band, he could prove the existence of ferromagnetic rigorously and so on. So. Um, but in, in order to realize this kind of flat band in real materials, uh, the fine tuning can be obstacle. But uh, we found that uh, this uh, flat band appearing in our model of Honeycomb network is uh, kind of robust or stable. Um, for example, you may argue that, uh, okay, so in this tantalum disulfide, um, we assume the simplest model in which electrons can propagate only along the edge. But uh, there are also uh, sites inside uh, because uh, Inside the domain is kind of CG double phase. We may assume that uh, in very crude ap approximation, uh, inner sites have higher 
higher energy or something. Uh, be. Then uh, electrons, in order for electrons to enter this inner site, you must add energy, but uh, still electrons can hop inside uh, this hexagon, uh, virtually at least. So that usually might lead to destabilization of flat band. So even if we add inner site in the model and uh, allow electrons to hop to inner site, uh, as long as the uh, energy of site energy of uh, or local chemical potential of inner site is uh, sufficiently high, uh, the flat band is robust, still surviving. Now, also maybe effectively the same thing is that uh, uh, we can introduce uh, further neighbor hopping into this model. In the original simplest model, we allowed uh, electron to hop only to nearest neighbor on this discretized uh, Honeycomb network model. But uh, if electrons can hop virtually into inner sites, then it will effectively induce uh, a second nearest neighbor hopping or third nearest neighbor hopping. So once you introduce further neighbor hopping, the naive argument, the simple, simple argument for flat band I introduced earlier breaks down because uh, even though we can choose the wave function so that the uh, wave fun function has node at the vertex, uh, inside this edge, wave function is not zero. And if you allow uh, further neighbor hopping, then electron can hop from here to there. Then the flat band might go away, but still flat band is robust. Um, again, if you think about this, uh, there is a si simple reason why the uh, flat band is robust in our model. That is, uh, as I explained, uh, now we have introduced uh, some second neighbor, third neighbor, fourth neighbor hopping so that electrons can hop from here to there. Then electrons can escape this uh, elementary hexagonal bracket, then flat band may break down. But uh, in this Honeycomb network, the electron can hop from here to there, as well as uh, here to there. So that means that uh, if you choose the wave function inside the bracket pro properly, uh, let's say uh, this wave fun function has positive sign, and this wave function has negative sign, then if the hopping amplitude is the same, between this hopping and this hopping, then uh, hopping from this wave function, hopping from this side, cancel out. So electrons are uh, again still localized. Um, so this shows that uh, as long as we keep the symmetry of this uh, Honeycomb network, that is reflection about this axis, then, um, and also if hopping range is uh, sufficiently short, compared to the size of the domain. So if uh, there is very long range hopping directly from here to this edge, then there is no longer cancellation. So this flat band breaks down. But uh, if electrons can hop only from this edge to this edge, then under the symmetry, we can have this cancellation of hopping. The localized states, remains localized and the flat band remains flat. So this is simple but uh, interesting, out, I think. So the, 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 the question is, what, what is the physical consequences of this? So our at least naive hope is that uh, this flat band may be somehow related to the superconductivity observed at a very low temperature region of nearly commensurate CDW phase. So if you do very naive uh, BCS type calculation, then uh, actually uh, you can find that the uh, superconducting order parameter is more enhanced compared to standard case where the density of state is finite. But of course, uh, there has been a lot of discussions uh, last week uh, whether flat band really can lead to superconductivity. In case of flat band, the BCS formalism is no longer reliable, that's true. 
And uh, Devanjan discussed a particular case of superconductivity coming out of topological flat band with Chan number. So in our case, this uh, flat band doesn't have Chan number. So this argument may not apply. So this is a uh, non-trivial question, whether superconductivity can come out of uh, our particular type of flat band. But uh, yeah, we think this may be related. And um, also, back to this Helium business, uh, we can see that uh, in principle, we can uh, have a T square behavior of specific heat for range of the density of Helium-3 uh, in a stable manner. Because uh, in case of standard Dirac fermion, as I said, you need to really fine tune the chemical potential to match the Dirac point. But uh, in case of our spin one Dirac fermion, um, for range of density, the fermion level lies exactly at a Dirac point because uh, there is a flat band to absorb excess particles. So as long as the uh, 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 fermion level matches this uh, energy of the Dirac point, a flat, flat band, then we can expect a T square specific heat behavior. But uh, we still have a problem because uh, actual density of helium-3 seems to be too low to, uh, for this mechanism to solve this question. Uh, but uh, I'm running out of time. Uh, out of time. Summarize. Yeah, the Hankam network of fermions may be relevant for different, very different systems. Uh, this helium monolayer on uh, graphite or electrons in nearly commensurate CD phase of tantalum disulfide. And uh, maybe most interesting finding is that uh, there is a cascade of flat bands which are robust against uh, inclusion of different perturbations, which is kind of pro protected by symmetry. Questions? Yeah, so my question is about that flat band. Um, so usually if you take three orbital model, and often we get uh, three states which are bo bonding, anti-bonding, and non-bonding. Non-bonding state is usually flat. And uh, my my comment or question, whatever it is, would be, you have this flat band. If you try to look at the one year orbital of those bands, maybe you have some sort of a three orbital sort of um, representation of the uh, one year orbital that you may find. For example, if you take a Kagome lattice, mm -hmm. which has a three sub lattice site, and you always get a flat band, which is the non bonding state. So maybe if you look at the one year orbital of your states, they may have a different lattice than the original lattice of the atomic orbital you have? Um, maybe, maybe I My point is, if you go back to try to get a low energy model, maybe you will get a three orbital, one year orbital model, which will explain your, um, uh, your flat band. One year orbital for the atomic orbital? No, one year orbital are not necessarily atomic orbital. Those are the localized. Uh, orbital in the real space. Well, so, so our uh, eigenstate is certainly localized, but uh, localized around the bracket of this Hanikam network. So it's, it, it involves many atoms, our model. Well, so maybe I don't quite understand what, what, what you mean by one year orbital this context. Well, for example, if you take the uh, graphene, mm -hmm. twisted bilayer graphene, the one year orbitals have a different Moiré sublattice than the actual sublattice of the graphene. Mm -hmm. In that sense, I was talking about. If you look at the one year orbital, they may have a different lattice than the lattice that you are seeing for each, each atomic sites. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I will think about it. Saki. Saki. Adip, Adip, yeah. first. Yeah. So, uh, as far as the flat bands are concerned, mm -hmm. even if instead of the honeycomb lattice, 
you could have constructed it using square mm -hmm. or something else. The flat bands could have still occurred, mm -hmm. but the, the spin one character may not have, meaning you could have right. realized some other spin. Right, right. Yeah, and uh, I would add that uh, even for square lattice network, triangular network, we can also have uh, flat bands. But the one difference is that uh, once you introduce uh, longer range hopping, then I think square and triangular at this case, it's not stable because uh, we cannot expect uh, this cancellation in general. Honeycomb is more stable with respect to inclusion of longer range hopping. So, so, so in the experiment for all densities, they saw the T-square law, or were there some samples and densities where it was not T-square? Uh, you mean uh, Tantaram? In either system? Oh, uh, you mean specific heat? Um, okay, I don't know about Tantaram disulfide, but uh, for this helium system, yeah, T squared behavior seems pretty robust. Um, yeah, I forgot to, yeah, I didn't include, but uh, this is a uh, plot for fixed density of helium-3 uh, for different densities of helium-4, the uh, OT uh, squared. And uh, also they did a similar experiment for half the density of helium-3, 0.1, Nanometer, uh, per nanometer squared, and again they found a uh, T square behavior. But at least in this helium system, this T square behavior seems pretty robust. I was just wondering about uh, if you model this network as in the continuum and scattering matrices, respect the eigenvalues there also have. Um, I think so, yeah. I, we didn't check yet. These hexagons are? In, in helium system? Or, uh, well, in, in uh, tantalum disulfide, according to this STM measurement, the diameter is about 70 ohms long. And uh, in case of helium, Actually, it depends on uh, 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 it would depend on the uh, density of helium four because uh, it is this domain wall which uh, absorbs the excess density above this six point three six. But uh, yeah, if you do simple calculation, if you assume the density of helium four to be let's say seven point zero seven bit above six point three six then the uh, structure should be like this. So, uh, this, so it's a 10 by 10 structure. So each edge corresponds to uh, three, four, <coughs> helium, four atoms. So the reason I was asking is Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, interesting. Yeah, of course, it's, in case of helium, you know, it's neutral particles, so it's more difficult, but uh, yeah, if this uh, picture for tantalum disulfide holds, then yeah, it's interesting possibility. I don't think it's done yet. So in the interest of time, maybe if there are more questions, you can catch Masaki at the coffee break. Let's thank the speaker again.